Hello, my name is Nancy Cormier, and I'm an occupational therapy lead here at Northern Light Home Care and Hospice. I wanted to welcome you today to our presentation on OT and bathing. The purpose of this presentation is to help identify ways of incorporating OT services to help improve our patients' bathing performance while they are under our care, and in turn, improving our OASIS bathing accuracy and star ratings where appropriate. A major role for OT is to help our patients with the complexity of bathing. From assessment and evaluation of safety, performance, and ability, to the implementation of adaptive techniques, modifications, and equipment needs such as shower seats and grab bars. Today, we wanted to bring forth a few thoughts to consider as you're working with your patients that may not immediately come to mind that should trigger the consideration of an OT referral. I'll turn things over now to Caitlin to discuss a few of these considerations. What are some things to consider? When a home health aid referral is in place, initiating OT in these cases to help with establishing the safest way the patient can bathe, as well as how a home health aid should help the patient in order to maximize their independence and safety. Should these patients sponge bathe? Should they shower? OT can help with establishing that home health aid plan of care to ensure they are bathing safely and to help them progress their plan of care as they improve. For those patients who present with dyspnea at rest or with exertion, we can work on improving their activity tolerance, use of energy conservation strategies, and work on pacing. Showers can really take a lot out of our patients, and if you're seeing they are short of breath at your assessment, imagine how they present doing a full ADL or shower. Consider those with impaired balance or weakness. Have you ever encountered the patient who told you, oh, I showered this morning? but presents with impaired balance or weakness that would indicate that although they may have showered, it probably was not safe. Or the patient that reports that they now only sponge bathe or haven't showered in a year or in some cases even longer. Is this because of safety concerns or fear or poor accessibility? OT can help assess the barriers that prevent them from showering or bathing safely and provide interventions and modifications to help them be more successful. They may need caregiver training or help with determining the level of long-term support that they will need to be safe with showering or bathing in the future or as their disease progresses. That's a great opportunity to have OT assess their needs and wants for that care. Or maybe their bathing could be improved with less caregiver support if they had the training, strengthening, and modifications. These are areas where OT can help. So let's take a look at a few more things to consider when working with our patients. What is their setup like? Their bathroom area or, or bathing surface may not be set up for their safety. Clutter, sleek surfaces, excessive scatter rugs, lack of equipment or unsafe equipment, inaccessible areas to safely bathe or to gather needed items for bathing tasks. These are some situations where OT can make recommendations or accommodations that can improve that safety and their ability to perform independently. Also consider recent medical changes that can impact bathing abilities. Fear can also hinder a patient's independence. OTs can provide a full assessment to determine potential causes and discuss interventions that encourage uh, strategies to help our patients feel safer or modify that bathing environment so that the patients can be successful. OTs can help problem solve strategies to limit pain during bathing through altered approaches to getting in and out of the shower or on and off bathing surfaces. We can help set up the environment with needed items around them to limit bending, reaching, or using modified setups or adaptive equipment to better manage their toiletries to complete bathing activities. Does your patient have a surgical wound or a pressure ulcer preventing them from getting into the shower? This is where OT can help them progress even before those wounds have healed to help them show them how they will progress with their bathing and return to that prior level of function when permitted and while following any showering or weight-bearing restrictions. 
physical limitations, such as from a recent surgery, think of our total joint patient, OT specializes on adaptive equipment, adaptation, modification, and interventions to help achieve the highest level of independence and decrease that reliance on adaptive equipment as they progress. Remember, the patient can work on improving that knee range of motion while participating in lower body beating. OT can collaborate with physical therapy to carry over recommendations and home exercise programs to maximize that recovery time, uh, and oftentimes getting them to outpatient sooner. Physical limitations, including difficulties reaching thoroughly cleaned areas of their skin, can lead to skin integrity concerns and further decline in health, comfort, and potentially cause rehospitalization. OT can help with assessment of a patient's upper extremity range of motion or range of motion limitations in general that prevent this ability to reach areas and provide recommendations for equipment and strategies that can help with maintaining adequate skin integrity and hygiene. This assessment will also allow us to perform a thorough skin assessment in the process. And of course, if our patients are scoring low on the bathing oasis assessment item and are not at their prior level of function, getting OT in within the first five days would allow the OT to thoroughly assess a patient's bathing performance make recommendations for safe setup, and also review the start of care OASIS for any additional input for best scoring accuracy. Remember, if their dyspnea score is a three or four, so shortness of breath with smaller arm leg movements, or short of breath at rest day or night, then they are most likely only safe to perform sponge bathing, despite what they may say. Shortness of breath dyspnea must impact safety, so a DSAT to below 88% would impact safety. Lastly, when our patients have an OT referral or you recommend an OT referral, be sure to encourage the patient and or caregiver to allow the OT to come out for the initial assessment. Our words really matter and our patients look at us for guidance in their care. If we simply ask the patient if they want OT, then there may be a missed opportunity for the patient to improve if they simply say no. Sometimes our patients don't see what OT can really do for them because they hear occupation and are retired. Provide education and let your patients know that OT can help them in their homes, that we provide options for them and work with them to find strategies and solutions to help them meet their bathing goals. We have put together a handout that we hope you feel will be helpful to you while out in the field. Please utilize this resource when considering an OT referral, as well as possible ways you can introduce OT services to our patients. Remember, your words matter, and your patients look to you for guidance and recommendations as they recover. Providing statements to your patients on how you see OT can help benefit them is more effective than asking them if they want OT services. Believe it or not, we still have some patients that don't recognize the benefits of occupational therapy. So we wanna thank you for your continued advocacy for OT services for your patients. And if you have not yet received this handout, please reach out to your manager. We appreciate your time today and encourage you to continue to consider OT services for your patients. Please utilize the OT referral handout as a guide. And if you have any questions about OT and bathing, please feel free to reach out to us or your local OT for guidance.